look first in Psalm 18. You can be turning there. Uh, and uh, I, you know, we always enjoy the, uh, the Thanksgiving season. And I know it gets uh, a little busy at times and people are uh, oftentimes moving ahead. And unfortunately, the, uh, the uh, uh, commercial world, it seems like they jump from one thing to another. And sometimes they skip over Thanksgiving a little bit. Uh, those things uh, seem like they just sort of uh, blend in and they're already moving toward Christmas and those things they feel uh, probably sell a little more or uh, gain a little more attention but you know uh, oh that we might stop and especially as believers and stop for a little bit and just be thankful and hopefully it's not something even that uh, we do you know just one day or a few days out of the year and uh, sort of want to preach to you along some things uh, about that this morning. Actually, uh, uh, my sermon developed, I, uh, and I'm going to use uh, the character. I was reading that in the scriptures, and a little while ago I made a note about him and and because uh, some things that were said, and it didn't necessarily say uh, that he was thankful, but I thought uh, that's probably a, a thankful man there because I think he realizes how he'd been blessed and that his blessings of who they came from. And so uh paired it with another scripture and another one in Scripture, and I want to preach to you this morning on being thankful for the one who blesses. Thankful for the one who blesses. And uh, we'll read this morning out of Psalm 18 and verse 46. The Lord liveth, and blessed be my rock, and let the God of my salvation be exalted. It is God that avengeth me and subdueth the people under me. He delivereth me from mine enemies. Yea, thou liftest me up, Above those that rise up against me, thou hast delivered me from the violent man. Therefore will I give thanks unto thee, O Lord, among the heathen, and sing praises unto thy name. Great deliverance giveth he to his king, and showeth mercy to his anointed, to David and to his seed forevermore. This is a psalm of David, and uh, this whole psalm, David is sort of counting some of the things that God has done for him, and he sort of closes it out. Uh, this uh, it would be a, a hymn. Matter of fact, I think they uh, sing verse forty six. Uh, I think it's a little chorus. But uh, again, the Lord liveth, and blessed be my rock, and let the God of my salvation be exalted. And he goes on. He says in verse forty nine, therefore will I give thanks unto thee, O Lord, among the heathen. And David said, it doesn't matter where I'm at, it doesn't matter who I'm around, I give thanks unto thee. And uh, again, he's going to sing praises unto his God. Let us pray this morning and uh, ask the Lord to bless our time. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, we're thankful for the day for what you've given to us. Thankful for a time that we can look into the scriptures. Father, I ask that you might help me this morning. I ask that you might fill me with the power of your Holy Spirit. Help me to preach those things you've laid on my heart. Father, I pray it might be an encouragement to each and every one that's here that we might take a moment and we might examine ourselves and see if our hearts are in tune with you and that, Father, truly, we are those folks that give thanks for, uh, for where you've brought us and how you've uh, worked in our lives. And, Father, may we be thankful. But, Lord, we ask that most of all, if there are those here who've never trusted in you, they don't know the gift and the pardon of having Jesus as their Savior, Father, we ask that you might help them this morning to receive you and to know the truth of the gospel. Father, we ask that you might bless our time together. And Lord, again, I pray for your help this morning, blessing the class in the back, and we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. And uh, again, Thanksgiving, uh, you know, a time when we trace it back to some of the early uh, settlers of our country and uh, the pilgrims, and uh, we, you know, always uh, think of that uh, this time of year, or many do, and they came to this country uh, seeking uh, freedom and seeking religious freedom, and they celebrated. And matter of fact, a hard time for folks. Uh, I can imagine I've uh, had the privilege, uh, they have replicas of, uh, you know, some of those uh, uh, different things, and you see the size of, of ships and stuff, and hadn't exactly seen the uh, replica of the Mayflower, but some of the ships of that era and stuff, and just actually seeing it. At one time, you always thought that they, you know, they went down below and they slept. There's a really good chance those people, when they crossed the sea, that they were just on deck on that all the time. I mean, uh, some of the compartments in that, they had to store their food and that for the journey and the voyage and much less when they got here. Uh, and even just to see the chart that shows how many survived of who they know that came and the families, uh, it's pretty staggering just to see what they encountered 
in the new world, as you might say, but again, people with a heart for something because they wanted to serve God as they chose to. And of course, uh, we, you know, honor uh, sort of their giving of thanks and what they did and they got together and they uh, they had a feast and they did that and sort of at the end of harvest, we might say, and those things. But you know, as we look through scriptures, we find that our Bible in many places exhorts us to be a thankful people and exhorts us to uh, to think of God and his provision for us. And so often we find ourselves in places that we say, well, uh, it's surely hard to be thankful here. Uh, you know, that uh, bad things have happened. I'm not in a good place or, you know, life has been hard. I hurt more today than I did uh, yesterday. And, uh, and we find ourselves in tough life places. And oftentimes those are places where we truly sort of don't turn heavenward and find ourselves maybe being as thankful as we should. And oftentimes there are just storms of this world. I mean, I don't want to uh, belittle anything that somebody goes through. If it's real to you, it's real. And uh, if it's happening in your life, it's very real, whether uh, others understand it or not. But yet, you know, we're mandated in Scripture in the First Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 18. He says, in everything, Paul says, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. And, you know, so often that is a hard thing at times to do. <clears throat> but, you know, even if we look around and we can get over some of our earthly problems and by that meaning they may not go away but we rise above dwelling on them for a minute we have so much to be thankful for because of who our god is and we have so much to be thankful for that truly we never walk alone through those things on this earth those of us who know him and david uh, as a child of god and is one who gives credit to his god for all the things that he does throughout all the hard seasons of David's life, many times not being uh, uh, maybe in the right place that he would want to be, hunted by uh, those who hated him, again, always having enemies. Matter of fact, he gives God credit and, uh, for giving him victory over some of those who were uh, against him and who had risen up against him. But he said, even among the, the heathen, even among the people who are not... Uh, godly and even among those who don't give credit to you i want to sing praises unto you and i'm going to give thanks and he surely says that his lord lives and are we thankful for that today and just like the great hymn we just sung great is thy faithfulness and god is faithful and he's faithful in every season whether we are or not and matter of fact that's something that so often i can truly say i'm thankful for because even in my seasons of unfaithfulness, and there are many, uh, I just confess that this morning, in my seasons of that, God has always been faithful. He never moves. I'm the one that wanders away. And I'm the one whose heart grows cold, the one who's up and down, the one who, uh, again, maybe doesn't do as I should. But God is the constant. And God is the steady uh, rock that we can go back through. And we're thankful for those titles and for, again, those word pictures that we have in Scripture. As David did say, the Lord liveth and blessed be my rock. And David takes that personally. He says, this is my God. This is my rock. And let the God of my salvation be exalted. Because no matter what that David didn't have right now in his life, he had much more because of who his God was. And you know, when we live as a, with a thankful heart, I believe that we begin to see God as many things in our life and we begin to see who He is and what He does in our life. And oftentimes, again, it gets clouded by the, the circumstances going on at the time, the problems that surround us. And those things can shadow over. But if we occasionally can again rise above them, it doesn't make it go away. But we see our God for who it is. I think that's what David was able to do in many of the Psalms. You know, I thought of a man... And again, he's one who sort of inspired my sermon. I made a note or two as I was reading uh, my personal reading a little uh, little while back and read through uh, reading through some of the Old Testament. And uh, you know, there's one of the a couple of those folks that stand out in the Bible. We've been uh, studying one in uh, Sunday school. Uh, uh, Joseph, you know, uh, there's not a lot bad said about him. We find a couple others in scriptures that you don't know a lot about, but you don't find a lot said that was against them. 
And they more or less seemed to be those type of people that just stood up, stood for God, and spoke out about certain things. And again, one of those that we don't find a whole lot mentioned about him, but most of what we find was, was positive about him, was the man by the name of Caleb in the Old Testament. And uh, Caleb was one of those 12 spies of the promised land. And you might remember that he was one of the two who gave a good report. Joshua and Caleb came back and said, oh, it's a good land. Let's take it now. The other said, oh, it's a blessed land. You know, grapes that we had to carry between two men. Uh, you know, land that floweth milk and honey. Everything that God said about it. But oh, there's giants in the land. And uh, that's all they've seen is what the God could not do. And uh, again, it's people that God had just done so much for. And yet now their vision is, is, oh, God can't do this. And, you know, aren't we just like that? Many times that God has done so much for us, but then whatever's ahead of us, we just sit there and say, oh, you know, there it is. And that's how those 12 spy the other 10. And they had that. Matter of fact, God judged them for it. And God judged the nation for it. They would not be allowed to enter in the promised land. Their children would, but they would not go in. And they'd wander in the wilderness for 40 years just because of the ill report, because they followed him. Except for two men, Joshua and Caleb, would be allowed to inherit the promised land of those who came. And Caleb was one of those. And God would allow him to live. And matter of fact, the, the scriptures say it, and I'll turn to those scriptures and just read uh, a couple of parts of that in Joshua chapter 14. And I want to give you some things that, that again, uh, the Bible may not necessarily say these things about Caleb, but I think from some of the things that we know about him, we can pick up. And I think that you find a man, much like David, who is someone in the Bible who rose above maybe some of the uh, problems in life, some of the circumstances, some of the other things that were maybe the initial and instead of seeing maybe a problem at every turn, I think he's seen an opportunity for his God. And, you know, that is such a different outlook upon life. And as Christians, maybe we are to embrace things that way. That instead of everything just being, this is so bad, nothing can be done. It's like, oh, it's just another place that maybe our God can work. And I think that that's how some of God's great servants approach things and what they seen. Joshua chapter 14, he mentions, and for sake of time, I won't read uh, that whole passage, but if you start in verse 6 and read through the end of it, and you'll find actually three three times in there, and I'll make mention of this again in a minute, but it'll say that, that Caleb would wholly follow the Lord my God, and that's what Moses had said about him. And he says, because thou hast wholly followed the Lord my God. And he said that he's going to get the land that he spied out, that his feet trod on, everything that was promised to him. And Caleb's now 45 years removed from that. And he says that God, his, uh, he said his strength, that the, the Lord allowed him to be just as strong at 85 that he was uh, at 40 when he entered the promised land. And that when he first spied it out, and he says, I'm as yet strong this day as I was in the day that Moses sent me as my strength was then. Even so is my strength now for war, both to go out and to come in. And he says, now, therefore, give me this mountain. And uh, so the Lord uh, had spake that he would have that land and Caleb and his uh, people would inherit that. And that part of the promised land would be his. But I think that Caleb's one of those that when we look and just what we know about him, it's not a lot, but what we can see about Caleb, that he seemed to be a man who seemed his God in a different way. And he seemed his God or seen him as one who would bless him. And he seen him as one who could provide and was well able to provide. And he didn't seem like that he quickly forgot the blessings of his Lord and uh, his God. In Joshua chapter 13, when we first begin to read about, or Joshua, uh, I guess I turned, I'm still in Joshua, I should turn back to Numbers chapter 13, but in Numbers 13, we see when they first come out of the promised land, that the spies had come back, and again, the report, uh, it was a good land, everything that God had said, and Caleb's report came up, and he said in verse 30 of chapter 13, and Caleb stilled the people before Moses, and again, they're talking, and he said, let us go up at once and possess it for we are well able to overcome it. Now, only two of them had that opinion. Ten of them said, oh, 
oh, you know, the, the sons of Anak are there. They're, they're stronger than we are. Their cities are walled. Uh, you know, they're giants. They're uh, worse grasshoppers in their sight. And all they did was live in fear and they seen that. And Caleb's like, you know, this is our God who brought us out and he'll take us in because he promised it to us. In chapter 14 and verse 8, he said, if the Lord delight in us, then he will bring us into the land and give it us a land which floweth with milk and honey. And Caleb again tried to encourage the people. In verse 24, he says, or was said of him, but my servant Caleb, because he had had another spirit with him and had followed me fully, him will I bring into the land wherewith, whereinto he went, and his seed shall possess it. Now, don't get confused at another spirit. If you read that, he's talking about instead of the spirit of those who are against, that he again had a different spirit because he was serving the Lord. So uh, just because I cut in right there, make sure we know what we're talking about. It wasn't that he had something uh, strange or some other vision, but again, following the Lord and doing that. And Caleb was acknowledged because of his willingness to follow God, to obey him, and to believe that God would take care of him. You know, again, when I looked at Caleb and when I thought of him a few uh, a while back and I was thinking that's uh, something uh, neat about him and something I wanted to use, I couldn't help but to think that of all the things that I'm going to go over here in a minute that I think we can see in Caleb's life, that that doesn't come back to see that Caleb had these things in his life, but it's what probably made him thankful for where he was. We don't see him really connected with being thankful but I can't help to think that it goes together because David understood some of these very same things. And we find David sitting there and recounting the fact that he was thankful for his God and where he had brought him. So I want to give you some things that I think about Caleb that he probably seen. And I think that again, David shared these and maybe many of those down through the ages and even another lady that I'll make a comment about and a quote from. But I think that they seen some of these things in their life and it set them apart from others around them. Because again, it came back to having a spirit and a different spirit about them. And maybe a spirit that made them thankful. Because again, rising above the clouds of their problems, they seen God for who God was. And they seen what he could do in his life. Because remember that God works over and above the problems of our life. And he has power over and above the things that we sometimes think are such obstacles and there's no way they can be handled, no way they can be taken care of. And yet our God can still work. Let us never forget that, the illustrations given in Scripture. So I want to give you some things quickly this morning. I pray it will be a blessing to you. And as our time goes, I've spent much on introduction. So I'll move through these quickly. But Caleb seen God as, a, as his deliverer. And I think that David and I think all the others did. As a matter of fact, uh, those great Christians, I think first and foremost, that they see that. And, and as David said, blessed be the rock of my salvation. He understood that it was God who had saved him and God who had authored that. Of course, Old Testament saints, they look forward to Christ and the Messiah coming who would die in their place and pay for their sin debt on the cross of Calvary. We as New Testament saints, we look back to that event. And it's not because of what we can do that we are saved and that we have a home in heaven and that our sins have been forgiven. But it's because God is our deliverer and he's provided all for us. Caleb even physically was among those that would have come out of the land of Egypt and had trekked out of that. Matter of fact, that whole group of people just to have seen the events that God had done to bring them out. And they're not far removed from that. And then their doubts about God being able to handle the promised land is really just, uh, just a, uh, it just sort of takes you back from the way that Israel looked at things, but they forgot so quickly that it was God who again, who is their deliverer and their savior. And oh, that we might never forget that. And we might never come to a place. And I think that when a Christian comes to a place, especially being of unthankful, uh, uh, to have that mindset in their life and really of not living in thankfulness, that they surely have forgotten and they've surely come to a place where they've put it on the back burner that God is their deliverer and that truly he has set him free. Uh, John chapter 8, verse 32. And I'll turn it over there so I don't, I don't butcher quoting the scripture because uh, as I get older, uh, I always hate to do that. And uh, this verse uh, is one that a friend of mine, whenever he gave testimony, they'd have testimony meetings at church. 
And uh, he would quote part of this, but it says in John 8 and verse 32, and you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. And uh, that man would stand up and he would several times, he would just say, he set me free. And then he'd sit back down. And he meant that because he understood what that meant to him. That's what God had done in his life is he set him free and the gospel had done that and the salvation that had come through Christ, not of what he could do, but it set him free. And this morning, if you are in bondage and enslaved to sin still, salvation comes free to each and every one who comes to Christ and trusts him and believes on the finished work that he did at Calvary, that shed blood done that we might have and we repent of our sins and trust in Christ and believe on him and he'll set you free this morning. Salvation comes. I believe Caleb knew that God was his deliverer. Secondly, I believe that Caleb knew that God was his provider of all that we have. You know, that's why I think that he could look and, and he could see, you know, it's like God's given us this. This is a promise. This is what I have. And God's going to make it happen. And he believed that. You know, do you fail to remember, you know, some of us will, will say, well, yeah, we're going to thank God for our food and we're going to do that and we're going to, you know, have prayer. But, you know, do we really realize that every single day is just a blessing from God? And I, I trust me, I don't wake up like that. I joke about it. I cry. I told somebody the other day, I said, I said yeah, and because uh, uh, running my casually late as I normally do. And as, as I said, well, I've got to have a little time. I said, I just sit down and cry a little bit before I go to work every day. And, uh, so I tell them that. But, but you know, and I, I joke about those things. But, but you know, we, we should realize that, you know, if we get out of bed in the morning, and we're able to get up and we're able to, to think and to do. And matter of fact, we're able to, to pray more than just the physical things because many are limited in that. But yet we come down and we just realize that God is the provider and that God has been good to us, probably better than we deserve if you get right down to it. And God has blessed us. I think the quality of those in the Bible who were thankful realized that God was their provider. You know, I read a, a quote from uh, Corey Ten Boom. She was the one, uh, the book, The Hiding Place, and the story that came out of that, and the account of that, really. Not just a tale, but a real event. And uh, survived the Holocaust, hit others uh, from the Nazis, and then actually ended up in a, in a concentration camp herself with her sister, lost her sister in there. But she said, you can never learn that Christ is all you need until Christ is all you have. And, uh, you know, that's a thought. As a matter of fact, uh, you know, really, when you just consider a little part of that and read some excerpts from her life and stuff, and matter of fact, her, her sister at one uh, part, and don't have time to get into all that, and probably didn't fully research it, but her sister said, I'm thankful for the fleas. And, uh, and that was out of that book because her sister said uh, that the fleas that were in the barracks that they were in, and they were awful. And, uh, and Corey said she didn't understand how she could be thankful for the fleas but it kept some of the guards out of there and it kept some of those things away from there. And she became thankful for even something such as a pest of that. And, uh, and again, just the, some of the, the things that they drew from, even though despite their situation and pieces of scripture that they had and some of the things that are interesting that come from that. And uh, again, an amazing account of what God can do in someone's life despite their circumstances. But she realized that. And if we would just fathom and, and focus a little bit that God is our provider of all that we have. And really, uh, we can learn more about him when he's all uh, that we do have. And if we would understand that. Thirdly, this morning is he is one who blesses us. Uh, you know, everything that is good comes from heaven above. And God gives us that. All good things. Uh, he's, he's our blesser. And uh, matter of fact, blesser is not a real word. Uh, my wife accuses me of uh, making up words all the time. Well, I made one up and I thought the other night I was about to uh, make that as part of uh, uh, that point. And I thought, no, I'm going to put that in there because that's my word. And I thought it was funny. I did look it up. It's not in your dictionary. Uh, but, but I hope you have a blesser today and one who does that. And, uh, and I, hope he, uh, I hope he does that real well for you. And I hope that you look to God and realize that he is one who blesses us and that he is one who gives us good things and that we can be thankful for that. And hopefully as believers that we relish in that and we realize just, just what God has blessed us with, life and health and people and those things that we have, that it's all due to him. I can't help but to think that someone like Caleb, who is so willing to take on the promises of God that God had given him to him, that he understood from where his blessings came. 
He understood for the one who provided for him and who is his deliverer. And fourthly, I think he understood, as I move quickly through these, who his helper was. You know, uh, really when, uh, you know, he understood that, hey, it doesn't matter that there's a giant in that land or a family of giants. My God takes care of all my needs. And I think he understood that. He wasn't worried about the walled cities. You know, we move in the future in the Bible because after he would inherit the promised land, they had taken down one of the walled cities and they didn't lift a sword to do it at the time. God did it for them. And they'd march around Jericho and God would drop the walls for them just because he wanted to show that whole place that he was God and he can do things in a different way. Caleb understood that and he believed that and he believed that God was his helper. And just as we uh, said from Miss Ten Boom, she realized that again, when Christ is all I have, that's maybe when we come and we seek him for help. But what if we just done that on a daily basis and just realize that in my life that God can help me and he can help me even when I can't help myself. And when there's nothing that it seems like that I can do that I can turn to him and I can find a resource and a help in my time of trouble. And that's why the book of Psalms is such a blessing because David time and again seems to find that in his God. He was a resourceful man. He was a, a well-equipped man. He was good in battle, good with his, his weapons. But still, I think he understands that it was God who made him that way. God who gave him the victory from the time he fought Goliath till uh, the time that even he would face other things in his life. That it was God who again was his helper. I think again a man like Caleb, those two even though they lived seasons apart and times apart in the Bible, that yet they were sort of cut out of that same mold that they seen God as who he was and that God was their helper. I think you and I could uh, benefit from that. If we see God as our helper, when we can't help ourselves, he can. And lastly this morning, I think Caleb, as it was said about him three times, uh, in the book of Joshua, that he wholly followed the Lord. You know, that's sort of the key to it all. He gave his whole life and he just said, I'm here, Lord. I want to follow you. And when he did that, it was an understanding. It's because you are my deliverer. You've saved me. You've brought me from something I couldn't do myself. And you've lifted me up. You've put my, my feet on a solid rock. You've set me free. And because of that, I want to wholly follow you. I realize you're my provider. You're going to give me what I need and you're going to make it happen if that's what I'm supposed to have. You're going to bless me. You're the one who provides the good things I have in life. And you know what? It doesn't mean we don't preach a health and wealth. Uh, matter of fact, uh, Miss Tin Boom's probably going to be one of those people in heaven uh, that again had, uh, you know, at the time of the judgment seat of Christ, there may be many things that she was given, even though this world afforded her very little pleasures especially during a small time in her life that was awful and we couldn't imagine but you could imagine again this the uh the glories of grace that maybe uh that were given and the things that the crowns and things that she would have the reward in heaven for her faithfulness during an awful time and of course we have some of the accounts given from that oh that we might realize that god is one who blesses i think they did god is my helper and he helps when i can't but he's worthy to serve. Caleb, holy, follow the Lord. You know, if you're going to, uh, as a believer, uh, have a thankful heart, and I think we should, and I think if we're going to be thankful to the one who blesses us, I believe we'll have some of these qualities in our life and that we can realize and that truly Thanksgiving doesn't just come a day in a year for us, but it's every day of the year. We're just thankful that we've got a good God and a God who is able to meet our needs, and a God who more than that has saved us and given us a home in heaven, provision far beyond uh, the things that we can even hope and ask for is awaiting ahead of us. But even as we journey in this world, the things we have need of, how amazing it is that God provides as he does. And even when he doesn't provide, may we be with some of those others in scripture that even if, it's not his will in this world. We're ready for better things ahead because God has delivered us from all of that. Oh, may we wholly follow the Lord and may we be a thankful people today because he's been good to us. Blessed is our Savior and he is the one who blesses us. And as David said, blessed 
is the rock and uh, the God of my salvation. And he is worthy to be praised. And I will give him thanks and sing praises among the heathen. May we do that for our God. This morning, if you're able to stand with our heads bowed and uh, we'll have a time of invitation as we uh, close our service.